Okay, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE's coverage here in Seattle, Washington for Amazon Web Services Marketplace Seller Event. Really the big news here is the combination of the partner network with Marketplace to one organization called the Amazon Web Services Partner Organization. Again, great news, things are coming together, getting simplified, and I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got a great guest here, Trish Glastro, head of Worldwide Alliance at Wiz, the fastest growing software company in history. Congratulations, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much and thanks for having us. So we were talking on camera, you had a little insights at AWS, you jumped on this company, oh my God, yeah. amazing team. Take us through the story real quick, it's worth noting, Wiz, the company, fastest growth, we're seeing, take us through the quick soundbite. Sure, so the quick soundbite, so I was at AWS and my husband shared an article with me on CNBC.com about Wiz. Uh, they had just done a big funding raise, and he's like, you really have to read this. And I read it, and I said, oh my God, every single customer uh, that I've met with the last year and a half has this problem. I have to find a way to be there. I don't care if I have to sweep the floors. Yeah. Uh, lucky enough, they needed someone to run channels and alliances, so I did not have to sweep the floors. Um, but for me, you know, when I think about our success, it's really this convergence of a series of things. It's, it's right time, yeah. right? COVID forced everybody to the cloud, probably a little faster than they were ready to. Um, you know, right market, uh, and we have this convergence of incredible product market fit, helping customers accelerate their cloud journey securely, mm -hmm. and then I can't say enough about the team, you know. I thought it was fascinating, you know, as great as our product is, when I got on board, everyone kept telling me, you know, they bought our product because of the team. And I was like, okay, cool, what about the product? And then I met the team and I understood, so. Jumped on really one, off one rocket ship. Yeah. To go on to another one. Yeah. You like to rock it. You like to ride those big, fast growth companies. You know, I, I wish I was the kind of person where, <laughs> you know, I just, I need some excitement, right? I'm, I love to build and I've had really good luck that I've always been able to find myself in a place, whether it's at a massive company or a startup, uh, to find myself as a builder, which has always been awesome. Well, Trish, it's great to have you on theCUBE. Yeah. And a little no fun fact is your sister was interviewed here on theCUBE in 2019 by myself. And so we have the first sisters, both CUBE alumni, congratulations. I think that's, you know, honestly, of all the accomplishments in my career, that's definitely one I got to make sure I get a plaque for that. You will, um, we get a VIP sticker too. Yeah, we're a all, we're all sticker, set. let's not get crazy now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll designate you on the front page. We'll okay. have a very big story. Um, all fun, all good. We love the CUBE, we'd love to get the insight. So I want to get your thoughts. Okay, you, you've seen the Amazon side, you've been on that side, now you're on the other side of the table with a partner growing. We're here at the Seller Conference. Big mission here is let's make things simpler and easier to procure software since you're already fast growing. What's in it for the customer to work through AWS to get Wiz? Obviously you guys got a lot of demand, yeah. a lot of money flowing through. You guys have a direct sales force? Are you going through the marketplace? What's the relationship between Wiz and AWS Marketplace? So huge, honestly, and it's been a huge contributor to our success. Um, we were lucky because we're, we were born during COVID. We're born in the cloud company. We got to build it from the ground up. This wasn't something that we had to go and figure out how to integrate into our existing ecosystem. Our ecosystem is actually built around the marketplace motion. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting as, as, you know, coming from AWS and now being on the other side, you know, something we really put a focus on is, you know, I see a lot of the companies that I was working with, mm -hmm. you know, cloud was very much this thing that's kind of in a silo and it's yeah. its own box and it competes internally. And really when you, you get deeper and deeper into the marketplace, it becomes about how do I use the cloud to really accelerate what I'm doing and to integrate it across my different channels. And for us, you know, AWS is our deepest yeah. relationship on the partner side. We invested heavily, early, and often. Um, and it's been amazing. <laughs> you know, Trish, I was talking with the Databricks guys as well, and, and other yeah. companies that are big successes. This is a unique time here at the marketplace. We're on the ground floor, you can see here, we're at the, there's no stage. It's the smaller, small venue, very intimate event. But it reminds me of 2013 when reInvent was starting to get traction, second year, small, intimate, a little bit bigger, obviously, but this is going to feel like it's going to explode. And you mentioned that you guys are building the emotions around the ecosystem of the marketplace because you were born, born in the cloud and COVID. So it's almost like if you're a startup today, why wouldn't you be in the marketplace first? Why even have that motion? So it reminds me of the old days of you're a startup, why not use the cloud? Why build a data center? No, and I think that's a really great analogy, you know, at least from what I've seen. 
it's it's super interesting as a startup because part of when you come out with a new technology in a perfect world customers would already know what you were going to make and have funding allocated for it and we would all have this much easier sales cycle that's not how it works the customers you know as much as they might want to get your solution yeah. they have real things like budgets to deal with and so it's really cool because when you work with the marketplace it's a pool of funding that the customer has allocated on the customer side it burns down their commit with the with their different contracts so that's usually powerful for them Right, being able to consolidate your IT spend, reduce your overall total cost of ownership, is, is usually powerful to the customer. And it, on our side as a startup, so not only are there the financial benefits, it also helps you elevate the conversation. You know, a lot of times in the security industry, it's really all about like speeds and feeds. That's how we sell. Cybercrime mm -hmm. is 300% on the rise and stuff like that, right? <laughs> um, but being able to kind of get above that and help the customer, you know, have that financial conversation is, is really helpful too. So if I'm a startup, I'm a company, what would be the playbook for me? So you know what? I'm going to go all in in the marketplace. I'm just going to build the best kick-ass product, mm -hmm. okay? I got product market fit, I'm going to focus all my creative energy on building the best tech with the best, best team, all my friends and colleagues, and none of this nonsense, go to market, direct sales force, just go all in on AWS. I know the product market fits there, what's the playbook? What do I do, just list it? So Liz, I think this is one of the mistakes that a lot of companies make when, when they first start out with the marketplace, right? They're like, I will get to the marketplace and then AWS will sell my solution, I'm done. The marketplace yeah, is just, really... Where's the money? Yeah, Back right? up the truck, come on. Exactly, right? Like they have all these customers, they should just all come to me, right? And I think that's one of the mistakes that organizations stumble on initially because they go to the marketplace and then AWS is not selling their solution for them immediately and they're like, the marketplace is a failure. And it's really not, it's just the beginning yeah. of that. Being able to go into the marketplace, being able honestly to set expectations internally and understanding the journey that really comes into play here. You know, building, you know, one of the things that I talk to a lot about my team with is like building success within the sales reps and helping them be um, big advocates and champions for the marketplace. And the other thing is like, don't assume people know. Um, I can't tell you, I feel like my, my real job at Wiz is I'm like the marketplace evangelist in chief because that's all I do is talk about why they should use the marketplace and how it can solve all these different problems. Um, don't assume that people know how to do these things. Like you have to keep reiterating the message. You, know, you have to find sellers that are ready for it. And then you have to really, you have to teach them how to do it and then align your sales process accordingly. Like comp neutrality has come up a whole bunch at this conference today. It's important, you That's need like it. That's huge. How yeah. big is your sales force right now? Uh, on, on the direct side or on indirect? On the direct side, I think we're like 100 or something so like you have, that. You have people out there on the yeah. streets, knocking on doors, mm -hmm. selling. How's that comp decision go internally as you guys have that? What's the, what's the uptake in the marketplace for you guys right now? Is it high? Is it uh, it's sell been through really high, high, honestly? Yeah, it's and we've been really great. We have some incredible champions internally who are really great about sharing their experience, helping other sellers understand. Like we've we've honestly had amazing co-sell stories with AWS where they've been so supportive and helpful. And it's amazing, like we've had so many sellers that have done their first marketplace transaction ever. And now it's like for some of our sellers, they're at the point where they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to not do a marketplace transaction. It's just, it's so much easier. Take us through the procurement benefits. Take walk me through what happens on the procurement side, what's the benefits for using the marketplace as you, as the procurement process goes through? Oh, from a from a procurement side, right? It's like it's simple, right? Like you you essentially click a button and it's done. Like from the seller side, like imagine not having to like chase down 15 different signatures and make sure nobody's on vacation, right? So it just takes this really convoluted process that they would normally deal with. It makes it a lot simpler. Um, on the customer side, right, being able to have one consolidated view is super powerful. Burning down against commit, super powerful. And I think that's something that's really helped our sellers too, is being able, like we, we spend a tremendous amount of resources on educating our sellers, not only about how it's going to help them, but also how it's going to yeah. help the customers so too. Good so, good internally for you guys, frictionless, yeah. easier, better, better, sounds like a better path. I, I won't say frictionless. I mean, we're well, we're about a year into this, but it wasn't so much frictionless. But it's not a hassle itself, right? It's not a hassle, and it's all on a about scale of one to ten. Ten being frictionless. Would you get it an eight? I'd or say like an eight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. But it's important for organizations to understand yeah. that, right? Yeah. Like that, just because there's a little bit of friction at first. Like the most important thing I told my team is they were like, look, like, well, why doesn't everybody want to do this? This is so easy. And a, a good seller will take the hard time every way when they know what the defined outcome is. Yeah. The marketplace to them feels like a shortcut at first. Yeah. So it very much be, helps them become like, hey, look, this isn't a shortcut. Yeah. This is going to help you. Like, 
this is a good thing. And once you get that adoption, like that, yeah. that's where the primary friction is. They almost go, is this, is this too yeah. good to be true? This can't be real. It, it, almo it almost sounds so too good to be true. When you think about, okay, so let me take, I'm a, I'm a sales rep for a second. Like I'm selling Wiz and I go and I knock on a door and there's a company and I get an, uh, a champion inside the company says, oh, I love this product. I want to buy it. I got to get my PO approved and I got to go get, um, I tell my boss about it. Does it go through that kind of normal, kind of normal sales motion where you got buy-in and now they got to commit and close and get a, 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 a contract, or they just go to the person who runs the account, click the button, like, like, like is there, I mean, I'd like to see that shortcut happen. Like, so on the customer side, what, what do you see as the process? Is it just go to the console and hit buy and, Depends you know. on the customer, honestly, and kind of where they are in their cloud journey. Um, you know, really mature customers tend to have a little bit more of a mature process. You know, <laughs> earlier customers, it tends to be a little less, uh, let's say, structured. Um, but no, it's definitely not. The customer just clicks the button and it's done. Um, that would be quite nice. We're just not there yet. Um, but it's definitely a much simpler process because you, know, you think about it on the customer side, when they decide yeah. they want to buy something, especially something new, they don't yeah. have allocated funding for it, so they have to go build all this justification for funding. They still have to do that, yeah. right? But then now there's a pot of money that they can go to um, and be able to retire again. So they're, they're, it, yeah. it does help in that sense a lot. Chris, Chris Grew has talked about on his keynote the buyer journey survey. Um, that seems to be on the, on the customer side, yeah. having those processes where they can forecast against it, they kind of know what they're getting. Um, that that's, that's, sounds like a great thing that's happening. I want to get back to this comp issue again, because this came up, I heard that a lot. Yeah. Uh, we talked with Chris about the competing thing, that's not an issue in my mind. But I think the factor to me, if I'm looking at this, is that if you get the comp right, mm -hmm. they can sell it at Amazon, you get comped, your salespeople get comped, goes through the marketplace. How do you look at that? How do companies, are look, how do they look at the comp? What's, what's the deciding factor, or is it a non-issue? What's the, what's the core so opportunity? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest, I think I got a little lucky um, because I think the getting alignment at the executive level that this was something we should do, to be totally honest here, wasn't, wasn't super hard. Uh, we presented a clear plan, how we were going to do it, what other companies were doing, what it did for their business to our executives. We, did we get some pushback? Sure. Uh, healthy questions, sure, but like it, it really was it margin wasn't super related, hard. or more like operational costs. It wasn't even margin related. It was again more of like, is this is this just feels too good to be true kind of thing. So it was more like proving it to them, like no, like it really can be that easy. Yeah. Uh, and then on the the comp side, right? For us, um, we look at it as like cost of sales. So, yeah. you know, we we treat it the same way we treat all other channels, and we wanted to make sure for our reps that. You know, when we think about the channel, whether you know, from, especially with marketplace, like yep. it can't be harder for them to do a marketplace transaction or less incentive for them yeah. to do that than a direct one. That doesn't incentivize the right behavior. So it's more of an indirect channel right. play. Yeah, so it's all for us. It was about aligning the right incentives to drive the right behaviors. Uh, uh, um, it wasn't. It actually was a pretty short discussion on the comp neutrality. Everyone was like, "No, this this makes sense. We should do that." Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's an easy easy. Yeah. But you have to be organized for it. Like like Chris said, don't put the toe in the water. Right. Put your flagship offering in there. Make it valuable, and then the flywheel gets going. The Amazon salespeople can sell it. Right. They get comp. That's mm -hmm. always a good thing. Yeah, and I think that's something that was really interesting. When we started on the marketplace journey, like I said, it's not just you get in a marketplace and you're done. You know, Chris talked a lot about ISV Accelerate and you know how you elevate yourself within that program, doing things with Ace, like putting in different opportunities to to start to essentially build that groundswell to drive CoSell. Uh, it's 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 that first step into it, but there's so much more that that we, and we're still discovering and learning today as we're building it and out. And you said you had some good co-sell examples. Oh yeah, so we've had some what, great co-sell. What's your best one? Best one oh, to share. So my favorite one. Uh, I won't say the customer name, but we were in the final stages, and a customer was really like, oh, like this is a lot of money. I'm really nervous, <laughs> and. Um, they, I think what's crazy is that at AWS, you have a different relationship with customers. Like you are truly a trusted advisor and rightfully so. Yep. AWS really does a great job with making sure their account teams do what's best for the customer. And so an AWS seller or technical resource on an account says, hey, no, this is the right thing for your business. Mm -hmm. That is huge for the customer. So we yeah. at Wiz actually spend a lot of time investing in enabling and educating the AWS account teams so they feel comfortable when they get into that situation where the customer's nervous of yeah. being saying like, no, this is, you need to do this, this is going to be good They carry a lot business. of weight with the customer. Absolutely. And so you almost have to treat them like a lunch and learn, get them up, oh, mind yeah. share. So it's kind of like an indirect relationship for you, mm -hmm. but for them it's a part, you know, this is basically a channel. 
Yeah, and I think that's the thing that, that really is something we've, we've really heavily invested in is, is building, I like call it the ground game within AWS, right? Yeah. Making sure we spend time with enabling their reps, we enable their technical teams, lunch and learns, right? Yeah. Like, there's so much energy at AWS to really invest in technical right. solutions that help their customers, awesome. which you don't always find at a lot of partners, honestly. Well, Trish, great, great to have you on sharing the AWS relationship story with Wiz. Um, Got to ask you, what's it like to be working for the fastest growing startup? What's it like? It's, uh, it's, it's <laughs> pretty fast fun. Pace. Uh, you know, it's, let's say I don't ever wake up on a day and say, man, I just wish I had more things to do. <laughs> Um, no, it's, it's been an incredible journey. Uh, the people, you know, I, I, my favorite part of a startup is you know, getting to do this with a bunch of really incredible, awesome people. It's, it's the most fun thing in the world. Um, we've, I've learned more in the last, you know, we, we like to joke that we're a five-year-old company and a one-year-old company at the exact same time. Yeah. And what's cool is we get to learn, and, and I, I've learned so much this year. When was the company officially too. formed? Uh, it was officially formed before, like, so it was officially formed in February 2020. We started officially operating in the January following. 21. So 21, yep. yeah. Yeah, so one and a half years. One and a half years, isn't that crazy? Great, and 100 million ARR already yep. hitting that. Yep, it's been a, a wild journey, I'll, I'll put it that way. Is the, what's the success of the business? Is it the onboarding, the, is it the business model of freemium? What's the product market fit dynamic? Why is so fast? I mean, also the needs there, um, pandemic, fresh clean piece of paper, doing it right. What's the, why is it, why is it going so fast? Well, I, I think about this, so I've been in the security industry for too many years, mm -hmm. uh, and when you think about normal security products, like there's so much time to value. You have to deploy all this infrastructure, and then you got to wait till something happens that you find that's scary, that will excite the customer, right? It's, it's, it's a lot of time to show value. What blew my mind is the way that we approach our, the problem that we're solving is essentially immediate time to value. So the customer connects within minutes, they're immediately presented with, here's your, your top risks, and then they can take action on them, right? Like it's not just here's these big threats and detecting, it's actually giving, empowering the customer to go and, and fix things. That's, that's powerful yeah, for them. Yeah. So, and the renewals are there, coming in, people like the product. I mean, we've only been around for a year and a half, so there aren't that many renewals yet, <laughs> but uh, let's say we have an extremely strong renewal rate yeah. from our customer base. Yeah, I mean, you can have, when you have a great product. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on and sharing. What's your assessment so far of the AWS Marketplace? Um, kind of reorg with APN, partner network, to have one organization. What does that mean to the, to the market? What does that, what's that tell you? So I was really excited. So we're actually built this way. So I run both our channels and alliances organization. And it was, it was great because it allows these two things to work together and, and very well. And, and AWS, I think, is realizing the power of bringing those two groups together. So when I saw that, I was like, that's going to be great. It's going to make it simpler, easier. And at least for us, it's been really powerful. Awesome. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. We'll get you that plaque uh, I shortly. Wait. I thought I was getting a sticker too. Don't forget <laughs> the, the sticker. sticker. Definitely guaranteed. And we'll give you a VIP icon on our CUBE alumni network. All right, I like that. <laughs> Thanks for coming on all series. Great stuff. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks all right. for having Fastest me. Best growing company in history here on theCUBE, bringing all the action. Again, the new flywheel is going to be procured through the marketplaces. This is obvious how it all kind of works and forms. It's kind of happening in real time. The Cube's got you covered on the ground floor here in Seattle with more coverage after this short break. <laughs>